This is the e-commerce brain trust, a podcast about building momentum online for established consumer brands. Join our hosts and their expert guests for high level conversations about e-commerce strategies, trends, and innovations. Access our brain trust and boost your brand's e-commerce potential. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the e-commerce brain trust podcast. I'm Kiri Masters, your host, and I'm joined by your co-host, Julie Spear. Hi, Kiri. So we're just having a, a bit of a chuckle about this topic that we're covering today, how to get product reviews on Amazon, because no matter how long we work with Amazon and how they change the rules, getting product reviews on Amazon has been a challenge and a hot talking point for for years now, at, at least for you know, the five years that I've been involved with with uh, Amazon. So it's <laughs> a lot has changed since we first started putting out content about this topic and it's still as fuzzy and nebulous as ever. Yeah, I think that sums it up well. <laughs> it's fuzzy <laughs> and nebulous. <laughs> How do you get the reviews on your product page? Yeah. So just to give people an incentive to keep listening, we do have ideas and um, <laughs> tactics to share with you. But the whole point of us putting this episode together is that we have a popular blog article on the Bobsled Marketing blog called How to Get Product Reviews on Amazon or Four Ways to Get Product Reviews on Amazon. And this was one of our most popular articles in 2017. The post was actually written in 2016 and a lot has changed. But what hasn't changed is the importance of product reviews and how product reviews affect conversions and PPC and sales and pretty much everything that you want to be focused on when it comes to selling products on Amazon. Yeah, that that hasn't changed at all. How the value and how critical building reviews on your product page, that hasn't diminished. It's still critically important to... Um, build your sales ranking and and everything else that remains. Mm. It's just how to do it has altered pretty significantly since the time that we published this article on the blog. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually just read out the article to the listeners of the podcast to give you a sense of what the landscape looked like then. And then Julie and I are going to come back after I've finished reading that article out and talk about what's changed and what our recommendations for brands are now. Sounds good. The four ways to get product reviews on Amazon. For anyone who regularly shops online, it's not such a surprise to hear that 61% of customers read online reviews before making a purchase decision. Reviews from real customers provide social proof, the perception of reduced risk that if other people bought this product and liked it, I probably will too. But sadly, less than 5% of Amazon customers actually end up writing a review for products that they buy. For brands selling on Amazon, this creates a paradox. Your product has no reviews, so it gets no sales. And because you get no sales, you get no reviews. It's critical to break this vicious catch-22 cycle and begin to build up genuine reviews for your product assortment on Amazon. The good news is that you don't need all five-star reviews, and there are a few ways to start building up your product's credibility with reviews. Number one, product giveaways. This is a popular and effective way to generate product reviews quickly. The concept is nothing particularly new since brands have been giving free samples to journalists and influential reviewers for a long time. In the world of Amazon, the equivalent of a high profile journalist is an Amazon top rated review. Just like Amazon ranks the popularity of products with this bestseller rank or BSR system, they also rank reviewers this time by helpfulness of reviews. The top 50, 100, 500, and 1,000 reviewers all have a badge that shows up next to their reviews on a product page. This typically lends a lot more weight to a review and is likely to be seen as more trustworthy from customers. So just to reinforce this point, when this blog article was written back in early 2016, It was still within Amazon's terms of service to give away products directly with the 
agreement with the person that was receiving the free products or discounted products that they would write a review and that's no longer the case and so we absolutely don't recommend recommend that approach any any longer but you could still expect if you're going to be running a promotion and um, getting a high volume of, of uh, sales on your products that you could expect a certain number of people to write a review but it's absolutely against terms of service to incentivize anyone for writing a review or explicitly ask them to leave you a positive review. Number two is the Amazon Vine program. Amazon has its own program for capturing quality, genuine reviews from their top reviewers and it's called the Vine program. The thing is, the Vine program is only available to vendors, that is brand selling via Vendor Express or Vendor Central. And Amazon takes care of all the logistics, which includes sourcing reviewers, sending them samples and following up with them. The catch is that it's a paid program and it can cost a couple thousand dollars or more to have Amazon run a Vine review program for you. Number three, <laughs> again, this is something that is not advisable in 2017 and beyond product review services. There are some online services which can help you coordinate product giveaways in very large numbers using their database of eager reviewers. This can be a good option if you're in a very competitive category where your competitors have a very large number of reviews. A word of caution, however, heavily padding your product listing with reviews from customers who all got your product for free does not inspire much consumer confidence. There has been a small backlash from consumers against brands who are seen to be excessively boosting their product review numbers through such promotions. There's a website called Fake Spot, which allows users to see what percentage of reviews on a product appear to be fake and with the idea that consumers would boycott those brands. How to tell if a review was written by someone who got the product for free? The FTC, the Fair Trade Commission, rules state that they should disclose this in their reviews the reviewer should disclose this in their review. Usually you see something to the effect of, I received this product for free in exchange for my honest review, somewhere in the write-up. And the fourth way to increase product reviews on Amazon, as included in this article, is a post-purchase email follow-up. It's possible to boost the average product review rate of less than 5% by sending customers a reminder after their purchase through the Amazon messaging system. It's easy to annoy customers with too many product purchase emails. Amazon themselves send post-purchase emails to customers, so you want to be short and sweet and provide the customer with a good reason for writing the review. Appeal to the natural human desire to be helpful, support a small business, or perhaps crack a joke or two if that's coherent with your brand. Cardinal rules. Before you go, I want to share a couple of cardinal rules with you. These are so terribly important, but something that beginner Amazon sellers may assume are okay. One, never ever review your own product on Amazon. This is explicitly against Amazon's terms of service and definitely not worth the pain of having your product listing or even your entire seller account shut down. In fact, it's wise not to have anyone from the same IP address, i.e. your home or office where you might be using Amazon, to review your products. And secondly, never ever offer an incentive for a positive review. This includes a cash bonus, a gift card, a discount on future sales, entry into a contest. Again, any potential benefit in the number of reviews is not worth your account being shut down. And finally, don't leave money on the table. At the end of the day, product reviews can make a huge difference in sales. Getting a baseline of genuine product reviews is a critical component of bobsled's Amazon launch and optimization process. But doing it properly within Amazon's terms of service and also in a way that customers can see is genuine is terribly important. Okay, Julie, so we're back to talk about what's changed since we published this article and what new information would we be sharing with brands who are looking to, to grow their product reviews? 
Well, I think we'd be striking through a fair amount of the article. <laughs> um, one <laughs> of the things that's changed is, as everyone probably knows, is the ability for brands to um, do incentivized, well, not, not incentivized reviews, but run promotions for discounted products in exchange for a review. So I suppose that is incentivized. Um, and brands mm -hmm. can no, sellers can no longer do that. So that has really limited sellers that are launching new products, new brands on the marketplace. That has limited their ability to really enter with a splash um, in the absence of really touting their launch outside of Amazon. So it's required sellers to be more creative in order to get the sales rolling and to get those reviews coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that in terms of um, the, the rationale and mechanism behind doing this big giveaway and asking for reviews is that if you, with any kind of volume of, of sales, you're going to see some reviews and Amazon doesn't give us any idea of what percentage of reviews we can expect um, we think that it's probably in the realm of like two to three percent, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the brand and the category and things like that. But so the idea was if you give away so many products and and you incentivize people to to write a review, you're gonna get a much higher review rate than that. And some some people still do use like a, a big giveaway promotion to drive product reviews because they understand that for every 100 sales, they're going to get a couple of reviews. And so for those situations, specific situations, it can be worthwhile going through that exercise in order to get those first couple of reviews. Absolutely. I think some level of promotion is imperative in any product launch on Amazon. Going to the levels that we went to prior to the the policy change for sellers on Amazon of giving away products in exchange for a review. Obviously, you can't go there anymore. But I think that brands need to consider how they'll promote the product, whether it's leveraging their existing customer base from outside channels, from channels outside of Amazon, leveraging their presence mm -hmm. on social media to celebrate the product's launch on Amazon, or taking mm -hmm. advantage of sites like Retail Me Not to have a coupon mm -hmm. or a discount for your new product. I, it's important that that brands really give thought to their margins and their ability to promote a product when it's new on Amazon so that the sales can be driven because that's what gives you the chance to get reviews. If you don't have the sales, quite obviously, mm -hmm. you don't get the reviews. Yep. And yeah, 100%. And what follows that is how do you encourage the reviews? And so that kind of leads into the next topic of, is this feature going to be gone for sellers soon too, in terms of the post-purchase email sequence? Mm -hmm. So yeah, what what is a post-purchase email sequence and how do brands currently use that on Amazon to get more reviews? So the, the post-purchase email is an automated sequence that you can set up. There's a bunch of third-party tools that you can look into to see what could work for you and your account and your needs. Um, but you would set up a sequence to, let's say, have an email delivered to a customer two days after delivery to check in on their purchase mm -hmm. experience, their buying experience. Um, and then you could set up, send another email, maybe 10 days after delivery to check in again. The intent for on Amazon side is they want these emails to be a value add and another level of customer service for the customer. For the brands, you want to do that. You need to meet that goal. However, you want to engage the customer in a way that would encourage them to leave a product review um, on, your, on your new product listing. And so in order to do that, the standard, you know, I saw you got your product. Please leave us a review. That's not really enticing to customers. <laughs> right. And so brands yeah. and sellers need to up their game in terms of adding value to the the customers, whether it's you know, including mm -hmm. attachment, an attachment to the email that explains how to use the product more, or um, if you know you're selling a backpack or something that someone uses to travel you know, encourage customers to leave a picture of where they went with your, with the product, those types of 
nuggets will encourage more customer engagement in a review in in terms of leaving a mm-hmm. review than just the standard post post purchase email sequence. Yeah, exactly. I mean, no one wants to get more emails in their inbox asking you to work for them essentially. Right. right. <laughs> like, this will help please, me. <laughs> please take 15 minutes out of your day to help me and um, there's no value. Uh, yeah, just think about it from the customer's perspective as well particularly for people that shop a lot on Amazon, if they're getting these kind of emails all the time, one, they're more likely to unsubscribe and then no one can send them emails, right? Like that's been damaging the system is that lots of sellers have just sort of copied and pasted some generic feedback request from the internet and start sending it out to everyone. So then that customer is going to get fed up with getting all these emails and unsubscribe. And then secondly, it's just not, what kind of results could you expect to see from that? It's just, it's very short-sighted, very, you know, ticking the box essentially. What we try to do with our clients is figure out what what information, like you said, what, what tips can we share? What value can we add to them? How can we help them um, understand how best to use this product or be involved with, um, get more value out of our brand if we have some kind of community or service or um, guarantee or something like that. Yeah. And you make a good point too about clogging the inbox because any you have to consider for any sequence that you set up, I would say that two would be enough. Three, mm-hmm. you're, you might be tipping the scales. And the, yeah. Because yeah. Amazon's sending their own post-purchase emails as well. So right. for any transaction, a customer could be getting around five emails related to, you know, the batteries or (laughs) whatever they just ordered off of Amazon. And yeah, you just see that come into your inbox and you click and delete. So you, you want to hook, that's the word I was looking for before, hook instead of nugget. (laughs) You want a hook that's going to entice people to read your email and you want a hook that's going to entice them to leave a review and engage in the experience of your products and share that experience with other customers. Yeah, exactly. And and just to talk about what Amazon's doing themselves for a second, because I think that this is a really great new program that they rolled out in 2017 called the Early Reviewer Program. And this is available only to um, brands who are registered in the the new brand registry. I wish I came, came up with a better name for that. But it's a the brand registry option, which requires brands to submit a trademark and you know, go... 2.0. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So, th- so brands have a few more hoops to jump through to get enrolled in that program, but it does give them access to features on Amazon, like enhanced brand content and storefronts and lots of other things. The early reviewer program is one of them. We'll link up to a full blog post in the show notes here, but this is a program where brands pay, I believe it's $60 to enroll yes. a, par- a parent ASIN. And then Amazon will actually Um, And it's only for products with less than five reviews. And Amazon will incentivize customers themselves to write a review. So let's say you have a new product, there's no reviews, you enroll it in this program, you pay 60 bucks. And then Amazon will send an email to people who end up buying your product and ask them if they want to write a review and get rewarded with like a $1 to $3 gift card on Amazon. So Amazon recognizes the catch 22 that brands are in. They recognize the value of reviews on their platform. They still want brands to get reviews. They're not trying to, they they just want reviews to be obtained through, um, you know, genuine sales of products so that the platform is more trustworthy and reliable. So they do want to help brands get reviews, but they just don't want this to be done through underhanded gray hat tactics. So this is a really great new option that brand you know, only came onto the scene a few months ago. Yeah. And I, I do think it's a great program and it makes it a much more genuine situation in that the customer chose to purchase this product. They saw the product, they wanted the product, they chose to purchase it. And then they were incentivized just to leave the review. Um, the in- incentive had nothing to do with like getting a free product. So flipping the order of the incentive. Um, does make it more credible. And I think it's a a smart way to go. Something that we've noticed throughout the whole of 2017 is that Amazon seems to be 
working on more initiatives to get outside traffic to their platform. And to me, this is seen through the storefronts that Amazon rolled out where it's pretty blatantly trying to get brands to be sending outside traffic through social media or email or however they um, have leverage outside of the platform to their Amazon storefront page. They released their own social media application called Amazon Spark, which is meant to be about product discovery and sharing. And there's there's some other examples as well of ways that Amazon's trying to get brands to drive traffic from outside Amazon to Amazon. So to me, reading between the lines, I imagine that Amazon is in their algorithm rewarding outside traffic, Mm -hmm. maybe not more than internal traffic from keywords, but through all these initiatives, I can't help but interpret this as Amazon really wants to reward outside traffic, social media traffic, influencers, things like that. And so when our next point is to talk about leveraging your brand's presence outside of Amazon to drive sales and get reviews of your products in a perfectly white hat above board way of getting reviews from people who have genuinely purchased your product and and tried it and then go and write a review on Amazon. Yeah, I I do think Amazon responds well when brands are clearly invested in selling on their platform um, or on Amazon.com. So I think you're right that it's they're showing some clear indications that they value traffic coming from outside Amazon and that there there are some rewards for that. you know, as I said earlier, I think it's important for any brand or seller who's launching a new product on Amazon to consider how they can leverage their presence outside of Amazon for the benefit of Amazon, their sales on Amazon. Even if it's not a long-term strategy that they have in place, to have something in place at least at the outset, at least at the launch, um, it's only if you're going to make the choice to sell on Amazon to invest a level in the launch by leveraging your presence outside of Amazon is really important. I think it's a good way to go. Mm-hmm. And, and so that could look like promoting your your launch on Amazon on your Facebook page or on Instagram um, and including, you know, the URL to your storefront where you have a tab that's for product promotions and you're driving um, your social media followers to that page. I think that you grow the sales and then you can hopefully those sales flip nicely into reviews on your product page. <laughs> mm. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's a sort of a long-term way of looking at Amazon as, as one of your sales channels. So I think that that is, you know, <laughs> for a article that's probably less than a year and a year old, uh, a lot's changed and will continue to change over time. So we want to continue updating brands and sellers on, on the best ways to obtain product reviews and the most compliant ways to obtaining product reviews. But like we said at the top of the show, still, you know, there's still lots of gray areas, still unclear what mechanisms Amazon is using to police these. We always want people to be cognizant of the fact that Amazon is very, very smart company with a lot of data points and a lot of ways to see who may be the bad actors in their system. So in my opinion, it's certainly not worth it to ever try and um, do anything sneaky or, you know, just think about the long-term needs of your brand to be on Amazon. And if you are kicked off of Amazon for non-compliance, you can actually have your entire company banned from selling on Amazon forever. So to me, that's not a price worth paying for a short-term gain with with things like product reviews. So I always urge people to be up to date with the terms and conditions that Amazon has at the time. Absolutely. Following their rules. Step one. (laughs) (laughs) Successful seller on Amazon. Yes, exactly. All right, Julie, thank you. Thanks for your tips and wisdom. And I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, Kiri.